Hello and welcome back. This is the American Sede Privationist. Today I'm going to reply to Michael Lofton in his recent podcast at Catholic Answers on Religious Liberty. Let's have Michael start us off. Nowhere in the document does it ever express that confessional states, or, and specifically even Catholic states, should go away. There, there actually is evidence to the contrary because it does have parts where Dignitatis Humani does explicitly speak about how, well, if this state does adopt a confession, here's what is to to happen. You know, so it's it's not opposed to there being a confessional state, and in fact, there's no evidence that it's saying there shouldn't be a Catholic state. In, in fact, there is a clause at the very beginning where it says this, quote, therefore it, that is a council, leaves untouched traditional Catholic doctrine on the moral duty of men and societies towards the religion, the, the true religion, and towards the one church of Christ. So it's saying, look, uh -huh. there still is a duty on part of societies, and there, there's a debate on, okay, well, is this referring to states when it comes? This is wrong. According to the official application of Dignitas Humanae to Catholic states, confessional states were explicitly done away with by the Holy See. So in fact, the document, according to its official application, does teach that confessional states are to go away. The example of the Lateran Concordat approved by John Paul II proves this exactly. Lateran Concordat, quote, Bearing in mind on the part of the Italian Republic, the principles proclaimed in its constitution, and on the part of the Holy See, the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council's declarations on religious liberty and on the relations between the church and the polity, as well as the new codification of canon law. The principle of the Catholic religion as the sole religion of the Italian state originally referred to by the Lateran Pax, the Lateran Pax, shall be considered no longer in force. So there you have it. The Holy See, according to the Declaration of Religious Liberty, has approved a concordat with Italy in which the Catholic religion is no longer the sole religion of the state thereby ending a Catholic confessional state. Besides this glaring issue of the confessional state, Lofton is also quite wrong in the 19th century teachings of the popes. Let's run the clip. Wonderful question, and, and this is one that really touches on my dissertation with magisterial reversals. This is where it interests me the most. I'm, I'm not yet convinced that there's some kind of reversal or rupture here. I'm open to somebody changing my mind there. I just haven't seen evidence for that yet, N nothing that's conclusive. Um, but let's just go with a worst case scenario. Let, let's just say that somebody definitively shows there's a rupture here. What, what damage does that really do to the church? Now, if you look at the question, it would then be to say, okay, well, the Second Vatican Council, an ecumenical council, that is, um, reversed teachings of some 19th century popes. Now, when we look at those 19th century popes and what could potentially be reversed here, were any of those teachings definitive that is infallible? The, the answer is going to be no. Oh, I see. The, these were these were acts of popes teaching in encyclicals non-definitively. The encyclicals in question made it quite clear that the popes were teaching a doctrine belonging to Scripture, the Church, and the Church Fathers. Such teachings were constantly repeated, and the teachings were universally taught. Furthermore, one of the encyclicals, Quanta Cura, condemned the false doctrine through the use of the extraordinary magisterium. Quote from Quanta Cura. Admidst, therefore, such great perversity of depraved opinions, we, while remembering our apostolic office and very greatly solicitous for our most holy religion, for sound doctrine and the salvation of souls which is entrusted to us by God, and solici solicitous also for the welfare of human society itself, have thought it right again to raise up our apostolic voice, 
Therefore, by our apostolic authority, we reprobate, prescribe, and condemn all the singular and evil opinions and doctrines severely mentioned in this letter, and will and command that, that they be thoroughly held by all the children of the Catholic Church as reprobated, prescribed, and condemned. End quote. Quanta Cura fulfills the conditions of Vatican I for an ex cathedra statement. The Pope exercises his office as shepherd and teacher of all Christians, which is done in virtue of his supreme apostolic authority. He then defines a doctrine concerning faith or morals to be held by the whole church. Therefore, Quanta Cura is not merely a non-definitive encyclical. It teaches definitively that religious liberty is condemned by the Roman Church. I will end here with a quotation of Quanticora condemning religious liberty as a reminder to all that the liberalism of religious liberty is condemned by the Church. Quanticora quote, From which totally false idea of social government, they do not fear to foster that erroneous opinion most fatal in its effects on the Catholic Church and the salvation of souls called by our predecessor Gregory the Sixteenth, and insanity that liberty of conscience and worship is each man's personal right, which ought to be legally proclaimed and asserted in every rightly constituted society. End quote. <laughs>